how did your love for cockroaches start? And all animals, I suppose. I've always been interested in cockroaches since I was 18 months old. And I finally got some when I was three. And it's just continued from then. But what was it about cockroaches that just got you excited? Never really known. I've just always been interested. Um, she literally was 18 months old and she was clinging to the tank um, at a fellow educator's um, classroom. She was just right. completely enamored up by them. I, I can't explain that. Is it about the way they move? Cause they have, I mean, like all living things, they have characters, different characters, right? Yeah. But Meg, for you, when Shelby turned three, you gave her her first uh, five Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Now, most people, most people would be afraid of cockroaches. Were you? I wasn't afraid. Um, in fact, the gentleman's classroom that we were um, visiting when she was a baby and kind of got stuck on him. Um, he and I worked together for years and he, he told me, you know, you can't pass your prejudices on to your children. You're doing him a disservice that if I were to make her afraid or dislike bugs, maybe she wouldn't turn into the person that she's supposed to be. And yeah. I was like, you know, I felt like an inch tall. So I wasn't afraid, especially because he only gave us male cockroaches and with any pet you have to do your research. And so I felt fairly comfortable that they weren't going to get out. They weren't going to hurt anybody. So well, why was it that important, a gift for young Shelby at that time, though? She was I, so young. She just continued to ask for them as a pet, and she just never really let go of that idea. And, you know, she, she just had it in her mind. So um, I decided that, you know, they're actually pretty hardy pets, the hissing cockroaches are. Um, they're a good starter pet, actually, because um, if they get, forget to get fed for a little bit, they're usually okay. <laughs> Really? Like, yeah, you know how kids, you know, they forget to feed the goldfish and it dies. Yeah. You know, these guys, their metabolic system actually will slow down. Um, yeah. So, you know, they're, you're not going to have to go find a replacement goldfish. I find this so fascinating. But Meg, Shelby's been in and out of hospitals quite a bit. Tell us about her condition and how um, she's been she, coping. She was diagnosed with a condition called neurofibromatosis and in late 2016. So when she was, what, eight? Yeah. Um, her spine collapsed suddenly within three days and we spent the next six months searching out hospitals to help her. Um, we finally found a great one in St. Louis and um, that was able to take care of her. We stayed there for a month while they did a halo traction and a spinal fusion. Unfortunately, ahead of that surgery, they found a brain tumor. And so we had to kind of watch that for the next year. And finally, 2018, it had to be removed. Um, so, you know, um, she's doing some tremendous i mean she couldn't finish a sentence before her spinal surgery and she just she's doing amazing she can do everything other kids can do so it's just fantastic and we couldn't be more grateful but the cockroaches were an important part of the of the healing process for you for shelby as well oh, oh i'm sure they were i mean they did brought her so much comfort um i wish we could show you pictures of her hospital room she had pictures of cockroaches all over people sent her puzzles with cockroaches on them and t-shirts and um like little Girl Scout troops would come and visit the hospital and she would teach them about cockroaches from her hospital bed. So yeah, it was definitely an important part of her healing. I had a couple nurses draw me a picture of a roach when I was having my brain surgery. Yeah. Right. So, anywhere she goes, she teaches people about them. <laughs> now, Shelby, I, I, I found this somewhere and it says you have more than 7,000 cockroaches of different species. So tell us about these cockroaches that you have. Which one, do you have a favorite? My favorite would be the extinct in the wild. The what? Sorry? Extinct in the wild. Wow. They're also known okay. as the Mount Duque roach. They no longer you... live in the wild any longer. Right. So now they, they live with you in, in a way. How many, so 7,000 though. How, how does that work? Did you, did they, did you, did they like breed and did, there was more of them? How did that happen? Just over the years, they've bred more, and I've also gotten more species. Um, the reason that she has the number that she does is because she actually breeds her own food sources for her, her reptiles. And so she feeds um, her bearded dragon, her gecko, and her tarantula from her roach colonies. And she also supports a local safari um, by donating cockroaches to feed rescued reptiles. So the vast numbers happen to be in the colonies, which she has an example of a colony behind her. Right. So we, that means the cockroaches, while they're your pets in a way, 
yet they they also feed your other pets who are geckos and the chickens, and the chickens too yeah and, interesting okay <laughs> I, I i love how it's it's like a it's like an ecosystem right so so now there's got to be one that that you absolutely love more than the rest is there cockroaches they would be my extinct in the wild all would right you like to meet them? yeah please do you have yes please oh she's got everything all behind her is there a name oh man I don't have just one i have multiple now explain about the cage why it's set up like this for their cage they have a seal on the lid and they also have a thick layer of vaseline because they're really fast is it okay for it to be <gasps> whoa that is amazing. You know what it looks like? It looks like he's wearing uh, like a visor. <laughs> They're actually pretty. They kind of look like they have glitter and then they have kind of a striped body. It looks like a bumblebee underneath the wings. I'll find one that shows that pattern better. For a, a lot of people who think about cockroaches, usually um, pet is usually not the first thing that pops into their head, right? How are cockroaches, how are cockroaches even useful to our ecosystem? Cockroaches are great composter, composers, composters. <laughs> they will eat stuff that we throw away. Really good in forests. They'll eat fallen logs. There's about 3,500 different species, and only about 25 to 35 are actually bad or considered a nuisance. Sorry, what? How many? How many are actually bad? Only about 25 to 35 different species are actually considered nuisance species. Right. And so but those are the ones that, that crawl around our, our houses and stuff, is it? Right. Yeah. The right. ones people don't like. Right. But you have those as well. No. <laughs> so you do, right. Those, those, those cannot be pets, right? Uh, well, I mean, you can have them, I suppose. But, I mean, you just risk them getting out and breeding. Right. Most of us are exotic, so if they were to get out, I mean, we have different barriers, but if they were to get out, they're not going to breathe. This isn't where they grew up. This isn't where they thrive. Right. But you, you earlier mentioned that there are, are a handful, 20, 25 or 30 species that are, are dangerous. So how are they dangerous? Because the ones that I know, maybe it's just one uh, kind that's actually that I know of in Malaysia, but now there's 25 or more. So what are, how dangerous do they get? Most of them that are dangerous carry diseases or allergies. I see. And what kind of diseases are we talking about here? Not really sure. Like, um, if they're crawling through human waste, anything that you can find in human waste, you yeah. know, possibly they can spread to food. Ah, You're, enough yeah. said. Let's not, yeah. let's not get it. <laughs> I, I can list them, but... No, we're fine. We're cool. I think we got to make sure. Okay. <laughs> so here in Malaysia, we're, we're home to the American and German cockroaches, which tend to fly, right? And, and I consider myself to be a, quite the manly man, but they scared the living bejesus out of us. They scared the daylights out of us. Are these types of cockroaches the dangerous ones to humans? The ones that fly? Or do they all fly? Not all of them fly. I only have about two species that will fly. The ones that fly aren't necessarily dangerous. Yeah. I think you should probably worry about snakes and other poisonous insects right. over cockroaches, probably. But it's like they know that I, like, I, I'll be freaked out uh, when, when they, they approach me or something. I don't know what it is, but they, uh, I've read somewhere that they have, because of their, their, their feelers, I suppose, if you want to call it that, they they can sense vibrations and stuff like that. But I always wonder, why do these um, cockroaches fly towards humans? And when you're walking, why do they always creep towards people? Do they do they come to you when you call to them? Your cockroaches? No. How does it work with you? How do you are you the master? Are you the friend? Are you the? I mean, normally if I were to pick them up, some of the species would swarm around. Some of them are a lot calmer. Just depends on the species, really. Like the one that you picked up just now. That was super calm. Normally they're not. Yeah, normally they're not. Normally they're runners. We have to watch them very carefully. And when you say watch them, what do you do? do you, you, you can't put them on a leash. 
whenever we're cleaning the cage, we need at least two people on either sides to make sure no one escapes. Go that fast. <laughs> right. So the one, your favorite, why is it your favorite? Amongst all the others that you have, there's like thousands of species. Why is that one your favorite? It's my favorite because I'm trying to bring back their population. Oh, like okay. Because like they're, they're extinct, years. right? Yeah. So how do you do that? Just get them the right food they need. They like gel water, oatmeal, and carrots. They really like fish flakes. All the roaches like fish flakes. Really? That fascinating. Because I've got fish as well. I, I got to try this at home somewhere. This is going to be <laughs> this is great. Now, Shelby, with your love for cockroaches, other insects, bugs, and animals in general, and I see your, your mom holding on to the gecko, would you pursue yeah, a career do. in entomology? I mean, what do you see yourself doing once you graduate from college? I want to go to the filter of forensic anthropology and use the insects to find out when the person died. Really? And mom, you're, you're all for it. You know, we need people in every single different profession. And although that is definitely something I would not pursue, we need people in those roles. So, you know, I, although I love my daughter, I won't visit her at work. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, yeah, because I'm like, ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Shelby, why do you like that? Why, why is it that you want to do that? It's just something that's interested me for quite a while. And where'd you find out about it? Online? <laughs> Her favorite TV show is Bones. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. I like Bones as well. I never wanted to be like uh, in CSI or something like that, but hey, it works, right? So Meg, what's your hope for Shelby? I just hope that she um, continues in her good health and that she pursues her dreams. So I'll be there to support her. And Shelby, what's your message for people who are afraid of cockroaches? I understand that people are afraid, but I want them to know that only very few are bad. What well, you said 25 or 30 only, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the ones that are in our house, that's maybe one particular species? Usually the American or German. Yeah. Those, those are okay to get rid of. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I won't act by accident. I, cause, now that you mentioned that there's one particular one that your favorite is uh, it's going extinct, I don't want to by accident just step on it. It's, they're not in Malaysia, right? No, you won't really I mean, find them in the wild unless someone were to lose them. Yeah. So there are Asian cockroaches and there are American cockroaches. So there are different cockroaches everywhere else. And do they eat different stuff? Do they act differently? Yeah, some. I mean, some of them prefer different food over others. Some like carrots better than others. Some prefer lettuce, or different types of greens more. I, I'm I'm fascinated because you keep saying carrots. How did you know they like carrots? Because when we have like extra, you know, trimmings or whatever, I give them to her to give to the cockroaches. Now, interestingly enough, like you know, if I've gotten some lettuce or greens from somewhere, and the cockroaches don't eat it, we shouldn't be eating it either. And I've been known to throw things away when I noticed they wouldn't eat it. Oh, so, right, right. So they're I'm like, oh, there's something, there's something on that. <laughs> yeah, they're a great benchmark and they're a great yardstick for what not to touch if they don't touch it as well, right? Yeah, I have thrown lettuce away because of that. And I'm wondering what, what was on that, that they wouldn't touch it. That's interesting. Because you, you know, the what's that, the five second rule, right? Right. <laughs> right. Because I always say hey, it's a five hour rule. If it's still there after five hours and nothing's touched it, something's wrong with it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, so, yeah. So they're a good barometer, actually. Yeah. So, Shelby, I, I have a very strange hobby as well. A lot of people think that's strange because I like to collect a lot because I play tennis and I've got a lot of tennis rackets and now my house is just filled with rackets. And it's still a hobby to me because I like it. What's your advice for people or two people who have interesting hobbies or they want to get into something that they really, really like, but they're not sure what people might think about them? I mean, most people at school are like, you actually have roaches? And I'm like, yeah, I think if you have a hobby, you should go for it. 
And when are you going to come down to Malaysia and show us your collection? <laughs> Not till after COVID, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's going. I don't know about that. That's not going to happen anytime uh, soon. <laughs> we're, we're we're kind of staying put here. <laughs> so what's next on your list of things to get? So what do you have now? Uh, you've got cockroaches. You've got roaches. What else do you have? Gecko. I have the tarantula. Tarantula. The bear dragon, the gecko, the snake. I really want possum beetles. A what? They're called possum beetles, and they'll roll over on your hand and just stop moving, like play dead, like possums would. A po a possum beetle. Beetle, yeah, they're funny. Yeah, when they feel threatened, they just like dump over in trees. A possum. I know of a possum, and I know a beetle. I never heard of one as a possum beetle. That. This conversation has gotten me so I'm so educated right now. I I want to find out more. And Shelby, I'll tell you what, you're a great kid. Whenever you have time, and you want to come down to Malaysia, do give us a buzz. We want to meet you. We want to take you around. We, in fact, you know what? I want to take you around, and then you explain to us what roaches are in Malaysia, <laughs> and then it'll be educational for all of us. <laughs> you game for, you yeah. game for that? Mom's like, yeah, she better get paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> Momager. All right. Any um, and to mom. Um, what what do you plan for Shelby right now in the, in the near future? What is your immediate plan for her collection? Are you guys planning to expand it? Um, yeah, we are trying to get the colonies to breed a little bit better. Uh, her numbers are down just a little bit, and so that she can. Um, what, continue doing what, you know, what happened? Uh, chicken. We, we had a broken chicken. <laughs> we had a, a broken. Chick. <laughs> we did. We had a broken chick, and so the chick wouldn't eat food, and it right. started to get lethargic and die. And so I was like, you know, my last hope ditch effort. I grabbed a cockroach, and all of a sudden it gulped it down, and it was fine after that. Like I just kept feeding it roaches and brought it back to life. And so only would, would we end up with a broken chick that only eats insects. Okay. And so. So yeah, now so your numbers are down <laughs> because of the chicken who's eating yeah. your crop and you you need to bring that up again. Right. Yeah. Um, as far as other plans, um, you know, I mean, we're, um, we're kind of expanding our little farm here and just becoming a little bit more food independent and uh, we're learning about how to bugs. homeschool. So yeah, all the chickens like bugs. We do feed them bugs for treats. Are you planning to get other bugs? Um, at this point, I mean, if she, if we can find someone that has something that she wants, probably, um, she has a lot. I mean, if you can see the rack behind us, she has a whole nother rack like this in another room. Um, you get to the point where you start running out of space. Yeah. But and, and my house looks like a zoo. There are cages all over the house. But Shelby, you want more, don't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs>